Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about how to naturally mitigate or even reverse the damaging effects of alcohol. It's pretty common knowledge that alcohol is not good for your health. However, the conversation usually ends there. Not many people talk about the actual physiology behind alcohol's damaging effects on the body. However, in this particular video, I wanna talk about that exact physiology so that way you can approach the consumption of alcohol from a less biased or dogmatic viewpoint and a more rational and logical viewpoint. So not to spoil the video here, but the takeaway from this video is going to be more or less against the consumption of alcohol and pointing out its potentially damaging and harmful effects on the body, especially the liver. And I'm going to talk about why that is. So this video is really intended for those of you who are regardlessly partaking in alcohol and you want to you know, try to mitigate some of the negative damaging effects as much as possible, or even more so for the people that have a long history of drinking, perhaps uh, prone to alcoholism, or you're done drinking, you have a long history of alcohol consumption, you'd like to just reverse some of that damage. Either way, whatever side of the picture that you're on here, if you're somebody that consumes it or has consumed it and you're looking to reverse some of the damaging effects of alcohol, this video is for you. We're gonna dive in to some very simple things that you can do actually to reverse the damage of alcohol and actually achieve this goal. So quickly before we dive into the tips and solutions here and how to do this, I just want to talk to you about the primary physiology behind alcohol's damaging effects. And this has everything to do with this estrogenic effects or its effect on the activity of aromazotation in the body, which is the conversion of your androgens into estrogens. Now first and foremost, keep in mind that the most basic uh, chemical composure or structure of wellness in the body is this balance between androgens and estrogens. At basic, estrogens are part of the illness field. They are a group of more or less stress chemicals that have a feedback loop with other stress chemicals like cortisol and prolactin and serotonin, etc. And your androgen hormones like progesterone, pregnenolone, DHEA, testosterone, these are all your protective youthifying hormones that are generally associated with wellness. So really the primary or core damaging effects of alcohol is the fact that upon consumption of alcohol, there's a significant increase of aromatase activity or the conversion of these protective youth hormones into these stressful feminizing estrogens that are generally stressful in the body. They impair mitochondrial respiration, energy metabolism. They have a catabolic effect and they're associated with almost every disease, including cancer hair loss, obesity, etc. So this is the major uh, primary mechanisms behind alcohol's damaging effects on the body. So alcohol is first and foremost estrogenic, uh, especially if we're talking about beer, which contains hops, which is a phytoestrogen herb. So beer is doubly estrogenic than most other alcohols. However, all alcohol has an estrogenic effect because of its effect on aromatase, but also the yeast that are used to make alcohol, including spirits, wines, etc., actually produce their own estroderol. So when looking at alcohol, it's highly estrogenic, it produces estroderol, it often contains phytoestrogenic substances, and it's directly and clinically proven to increase the activity of aromazotation or the conversion of your androgens to estrogens. In fact, looking to some clinical studies here, it's been found that heptic aromazotation or liver aromazotation is significantly increased upon consuming alcohol. In one study, there's a significant increase in serum estrogen levels along with a simultaneous simultaneous decrease of free circulating testosterone levels in rats who are fed alcohol. Furthermore, the concentration of estrogen receptors in the liver is also significantly higher in alcohol-fed rats compared to non-alcohol-fed rats. Meanwhile, heptic androgen receptors are significantly lower in alcohol-fed rats. So this means that consuming alcohol not only increases the level of estrogens in the liver, but it also decreases the production of these protective androgens like testosterone. Now perhaps the most interesting and alarming part of this study in the physiology here is that 
This physiology mimics that of castration. In fact, the study even refers to the estrogenic effects of alcohol as chemical castration in the regards to decreasing androgens and increasing estrogens, which contributes to the pathology of feminization, hormonal imbalance, metabolic dysfunction, breast cancers, hair loss, obesity, and almost every health problem that you could think of. So this is the major reason that alcohol is otherwise unhealthy. Basically, it decreases the production of protective, energizing pro-metabolic hormones associated with health, and it increases the production of these stressful estrogens that basically make your tissue, cells, muscles, organs, etc., your whole organism weak, frail, and energy deprived. So a common goal amongst anybody interested in optimizing their health and preserving their youth and energy would be to decrease the production of estrogen in the body and specifically decrease the aromatization of their androgens into estrogens. So avoiding or greatly reducing your consumption of alcohol is step one. It's a major way that you could decrease a dietary estrogens and your total estrogen levels and preserve your androgen hormones. But if you're somebody that has a long history of this and you've already attributed to some aromatization of your androgens and you want to correct this imbalance and also protect the liver, there's actually a handful of various supplements, simple foods and herbs that can actually clinically protect your liver from the damages and the devastating effects of alcohol. So now just going through these one at a time. One of the first substances I would highly recommend if you're somebody who has a history of consuming alcohol would actually be caffeine or coffee. There's plenty of science and evidence that shows that caffeine consumption and its pro-metabolic effects, its protective effects, can actually protect the liver from the inflammation damage done, not just by alcohol, but any sort of toxic substance, including things like Tylenol or acetaminophen. So it's highly protective to the liver, has an anti-fibrotic, anti-inflammatory effect that can reduce or mitigate the damages done by alcohol. Now remember, your liver is the primary organ responsible for methylating or detoxifying or destroying estrogens and also plays a key role enzymatically in the production of testosterone. So by protecting the liver from becoming damaged, you're going to improve its ability to methylate estrogen, detoxify it, and produce the enzymes necessary to create testosterone. So this is likely how it achieves these effects. The second thing I would recommend consuming for protecting the liver from alcohol is actually fructose or fruit sugar. So obviously you get this from fruit, ideally organic ripe fruits in their juices. And this is because fructose has a really protective anti-stress effect on the liver. It's physiologically known that fructose can replenish liver glycogen 500% more than simple sucrose alone. So that's the liver's energy. You need that liver glycogen to perform all the physiological functions, specifically detoxifying estrogen and producing androgens, and of course, just making sure that it doesn't become energy deprived, stressed, and inflamed. So something as simple as consuming fructose, fresh fruit or fresh fruit juices, either before, during, or after the consumption of alcohol can be highly regenerative and therapeutic. The third substance I would highly recommend is glycine. Now glycine is an amino acid found in things like gelatin and collagen. Now glycine has a profound anti-inflammatory, anti-fibrotic, and anti-stress effect that's protective to the liver specifically. So the way that glycine works actually has a lot to do with this effect on the gut or specifically bacterial endotoxins. Now endotoxins are metabolic waste products from gut bacteria in the small intestine that stimulate the production of estrogen and they stimulate a stress response. They're a major source of disease in the body. So they protect the body from the damaging effects of these bacterial endotoxins, which happen to increase not only under stress, but under the consumption of alcohol. Now, according to the science, glycine works by the activation of something called Kupfer cells, which are gut derived from endotoxins. So basically the inhibition of Kupfer cell activation is effective for clinical application of alcohol liver disease. Glycine has been found to prevent the lipopolysaccharide induced elevation of intracellular Kupfer cells, thereby minimizing lipopolysaccharide receptor signaling and cytokine production. 
Now, what that means in layman's terms, lipopolysaccharides is the technical term for bacterial endotoxins or the gut bacterial endotoxins that trigger the inflammatory response that's involved in the inflammation of liver damage done by alcohol. So when you consume alcohol, one thing that happens is these bacterial endotoxins, they proliferate and those endotoxins cause an inflammatory response. So cytokines, they're inflammatory chemicals. So basically glycine has been found to inhibit or stop this from happening. They basically stop the overgrowth of bacterial endotoxins done by alcohol and also inhibit their inflammatory responses in the body. Moving on, let's get into a few herbs that are clinically and traditionally proven to protect the liver from alcohol damage. One of the best herbs for doing this is milk thistle, which is a quintessential liver tonic. It's highly protective to the liver. Looking at some clinical studies, it has been found that the active constituent silomarin has been successfully used to treat alcohol-induced liver disease. So it's well conducted in various clinical trials to treat patients with alcohol liver disease basically by inhibiting the inflammation caused by alcohol. Another really profound herb for mitigating the damage of alcohol to the liver is actually ginseng. Now traditionally, ginseng is a chi tonic. It's been used in, in clinical and traditional medicine to increase blood flow throughout the body. Now according to one animal study on ginseng's liver protective effects, it was found that ginseng prevented a rise in serum glutamate pyruvate transminase and inhibited liver lipid peroxidation by 26%, thus providing protective effects against chronic alcohol-induced liver toxicity. One final herb that I wanna to talk to you about in regards to this subject is the use of Chinese bitters. Now, Chinese bitters have a protective effect on the liver against alcohol or alcohol-induced toxicity, but they also have another really unique and profound effect in regards to alcohol consumption. Now, in the science community, it's well established that a deficiency in something called aldehyde dehydrogenase 2 is associated with the decreased likelihood of alcoholism. Now what's interesting here is that it's been found that bitter herbs like gentian root, belplerium, and tangerine peel, which are common ingredients in Chinese bitters, actually inhibits or suppresses aldehyde dehydrogenase 2, which actually results in a decreased risk of alcoholism. So in simpler terms, it's been found that by suppressing aldehyde dehydrogenase 2, you can actually decrease your desire to drink. And it also has a beneficial effect on alcoholism or the addiction to alcohol. Now, the way it achieves these effects is actually due to its effect on the dopamine system. These substances actually increase the production of dopamine, and dopamine deficiency is highly associated with addictive-like behaviors. And this is because most addictive substances, like alcohol, they produce a temporary high or feeling of satisfaction, but they do so in an adverse way by stimulating the production of stress chemicals like ephedrines, adrenaline, serotonin, and cortisol, as well as estrogen. So these chemicals give you a temporary high or feeling of satisfaction. But ultimately, after these levels plummet, they further actually deplete the production of dopamine, leading to this vicious cycle associated with addiction. So the way that these bitter substances work is by, again, stimulating the production of dopamine, which just naturally or physiologically decreases your desire to drink. It decreases uh, the likelihood of addictive-like behaviors, etc. Additionally, something else fantastic about this herbal formula that I sort of already mentioned is that the herb belplerium actually has a highly protective antitoxic effect uh, from not just the alcohol, but also the toxic effects that are caused by chronically elevated levels of serotonin, ephedrines, adrenalines, and other stress chemicals. So this is a must-have herb, in my opinion, for anybody who consumes alcohol or has a history of alcoholism. So that brings today's video to a close. These are just a handful of science-backed, helpful, natural supplements and herbs that can protect your liver from the damaging effects of alcohol. So again, if you're somebody who consumes it or has a history of consuming it, I would highly recommend researching into these supplements further as well as experimenting with them. However, that does bring this video to a close. So if you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos. And if you're interested in supplementing with any of the herbs I mentioned in today's video, you can find those on our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.